Hair loss meds. You've probably seen the pill, heard about the foam, maybe even watched someone get injected with their own blood. But what actually works, and what's just hype? In this video, we'll break down the science behind the top hair loss treatments finasteride, dutasteride, minoxidil, PRP. I'm Dr. Ko, a hair transplant surgeon based in Seoul, Korea. When patients come to me, they often think surgery is the only answer. But here's the truth. Medications are the foundation of any long-term hair restoration plan. Even if you get a perfect transplant, you'll still need medication to protect the rest of your hair. So today, let's dive into the science and real-world result. No hype, no gimmicks. Let's start with finasteride, probably the most well-studied medication for male pattern hair loss. It was FDA approved in the 90s for male pattern baldness, and it works by blocking an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which converts testosterone into DHT, the main hormone that causes follicle shrinkage. Once your follicles miniaturize from DHT, they produce thinner and weaker hairs. Eventually, they stop altogether. Finasteride helps stop that process, and sometimes even reverses early thinning. It blocks about 70% of DHT. It won't regrow completely bald areas, but in many cases, it halts the loss and gives thinning hair a second chance. Most of my patients who stay on finasteride see visible improvement after 6 to 12 months. But let's talk honestly. Some men are nervous about side effects, like reduced libido or mood changes. In my practice, this happens in about 2 to 4% of patients. We start low, monitor carefully, and adjust if needed. For most guys, it's very manageable. Next is dutasteride, a more potent DHT blocker. If finasteride is a sedan, dutasteride is a turbocharged SUV. It inhibits two types of 5-alpha reductase enzymes, not just one, leading to a greater reduction in DHT up to 90% or more. That makes it more powerful. And in some studies, more effective for crown thinning and aggressive hair loss. In Korea and Japan, dutasteride is actually approved for hair loss. In Western countries, it's considered off-label, but widely used by hair specialists. I usually prescribe it when finasteride isn't quite enough, or if we want faster stabilization. I typically recommend dutasteride if finasteride didn't work well enough, the patient has aggressive crown thinning, or they're already in their 40s and want stronger protection. But it's not for everyone. Stronger doesn't always mean better, especially for younger patients who are more sensitive to hormonal changes. We usually start with finasteride and step up only if necessary. Now, let's talk about minoxidil, the famous topical treatment. It's the one most people have heard of, but often used incorrectly. Minoxidil doesn't block DHT. Instead, it improves blood flow, vasodilation, and keeps follicles in the growth phase longer. The classic version is the 5% liquid or foam you apply twice a day. The foam dries faster, but the liquid penetrates a bit deeper. Both can be effective. It's most effective for the vertex and mid scalp, and it can be combined with DHT blockers for better synergy. But here's the thing, minoxidil often causes a shedding phase in the first 4 to 6 weeks. That scares some people. But it's usually a sign that older, miniaturized hairs are falling out to make room for newer, stronger ones. There's also oral minoxidil. Prescribed in very low doses, it's off-label but gaining popularity, especially in Asia and Latin America. It can be a good option for patients who don't want to deal with daily topical use, but again, needs proper medical supervision. PRP, or platelet rich plasma, is a regenerative treatment using your own blood. We draw your blood, spin it in a centrifuge, and inject the concentrated platelets into thinning areas of your scalp. Why? Platelets are full of growth factors. They help wake up dormant follicles, reduce inflammation, and improve skin health. I use PRP mostly for early stage hair loss, women with diffuse thinning and post-transplant recovery to enhance healing. But let me be clear, PRP is not a substitute for DHT blockers. 
It works best as part of a comprehensive treatment plan, not a one-time fix. Hair loss is like a leak in your roof. If you don't seal the hole, there's no point mopping the floor. So I use a combination approach. For most male patients, I recommend one, finasteride or dutasteride, to stop their hormonal cause. Two, minoxidil, to stimulate active regrowth. Three, PRP optional, for added boost or recovery. Four, lifestyle tips, because stress, sleep, scalp health also matter. When done consistently, this protocol doesn't just stop hair loss. It creates real, visible results. But you have to stick with it. These aren't treatments you use for a month and forget. Hair takes time, and patience pays off. Let's also touch on something that's getting a lot of buzz lately, stem cell therapy. This doesn't mean injecting actual stem cells into your scalp. Not yet, anyway. What we're currently using in clinics are stem cell conditioned media, or exosomes, which are rich in growth factors and cytokines. These treatments aim to reduce inflammation, boost cell signaling, and revive weak follicles, kind of like a more advanced version of PRP. Right now, it's still considered experimental in many countries, including the US. However, as time goes on and technology improves, I'm hopeful for good treatment results. My final advice, don't wait until you've lost everything. Start treatment early, be consistent, and set realistic expectations. Hair restoration is a long game, but you don't have to play it alone. If you're unsure where to start, talk to a specialist. But if you're already past that early stage with visible thinning or bald areas, that's where hair transplant becomes a powerful option. We take healthy follicles from the back of your scalp and redistribute them artistically to restore density and natural framing. When done right, a transplant can rebuild your confidence, not just your hairline, but it should never be a shortcut. For best results, we combine surgery with ongoing medical therapy to protect the native hair and maintain balance over time. Whether it's medication, PRP, or transplant, the goal is long-term sustainable improvement. And remember, hair loss isn't something to be ashamed of, but it is something you can take control of. Let's do it the right way, with evidence, experience, and care. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and drop your questions in the comments.